All right. Thank you all for attending and welcome to the world of professional trading. Now, before I begin, let me just quickly put up this risk disclaimer here. And please go ahead and, and read through that and then we'll just get started right away. Okay, so let us begin. Now, I know many trading educators make the claim that they are professional traders and they are in the world of professional trading and so on. But unfortunately, 99% of the time, that's just a marketing smokescreen, a marketing gimmick, if you will, right? Many propagate that they're a pro trader and that they can teach you how the pros really trade but very, very few actually live and work and make their living from the world of true professional trading. And that's why we hope this webinar is going to be a unique, valuable and game changing experience for you. We will be sharing with you some of the trading techniques that we employ daily at our firm. Now, for those of you who don't know about our firm, SMB Capital is a proprietary trading desk in New York City, Midtown Manhattan to be specific, and it was co-founded by Mike Balafiore and Steve Spencer, who have been actively trading the markets since 1997, and who you're actually going to be uh, hearing from. They're going to be teaching you directly in this webinar today. Now, our firm was launched in 2005. And it's been growing steadily through many different markets, making us actually one of the most successful and lasting proprietary trading firms on Wall Street. Uh, this here is a picture of our current trading floor where we have 50 plus traders actively trading firm capital. And, and shortly, we're actually going to be giving you an inside look with a behind the scenes tour of our proprietary trading firm and our traders. Uh, we've been featured in the highly popular television series, Wall Street Warriors, and our traders are regularly featured in numerous financial networks like CNBC, Bloomberg TV, and others. One of our co-founders, Mike Bellafiore, is also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and The Playbook. Now, if you start as a new trader at a prop trading firm anywhere in the world, chances are one good trade is recommended reading. Uh, SMB has become one of the most successful proprietary trading firms globally, and it has done so by training new traders into seven-figure traders. Now, what do I mean when I say seven-figure trader? Well, that's a trader who nets over $1 million a year in trading profits. If you do that, you earn a green shirt at our trading firm. Now, you may be asking yourself, what exactly is a proprietary trading firm? Well, there's many different business models in that area, but I'm going to stick to ours. So our firm provides all the capital and training for traders. The firm takes all the downside risk. So not only do we give the capital, but we actually train our traders very extensively, meaning that we are taking on more risk than other firms by spending more time and investing more in our own traders and supporting them as they're learning and beginning their trading careers. So we provide all the training they need, even in some cases hiring outside trading psychologists or coaches for our most elite traders. And then we split trading profits with the traders, and this is our only source of revenue at our prop trading firm. Now I mention this because this is a very large differentiator between SMB and others in the trader education space. Our primary business and how we spend 85% of our time and effort is growing our P&L proprietary trading business. Only 15% of the time is spent on our trading education business like this webinar here. Okay, so mostly we're sitting around tackling issues like how do we get our profitable traders to make more? What resources and training do we need to provide our seven-figure traders to help them grow? 
How do we train new traders in current market conditions so more of them excel and faster? So all this is to say that what you're going to be discovering in this webinar is the stuff that we teach our professional proprietary traders and that works in the real world. Perhaps what many of you have not had access to in this point in your trading development and what makes all the difference between reaching your trading potential or underperforming. Namely, how do the pros really trade? What are they doing so differently than you? Do they have an information edge that you as an independent trader don't possess? What market traps are they avoiding to which you're not even aware? And how do they manage to make significant trading profits with such incredible and inspiring consistency? So as you see, this webinar will be unique for your trading development. You've never been given an inside look to learn the strategies that the true pros on Wall Street are using. But you're about to learn exactly that right now. In fact, you're going to be learning the exact strategies and setups that our traders have been taught, mastered, and used to make six and seven figures a year. And because it's a known fact that over 95% of retail traders fail, despite all the trading education that they usually pay for, it's very obvious to us that too many new and developing traders are being taught the wrong stuff. All right, weekly we receive emails from ambitious, hardworking, hungry, developing traders who started incorrectly, either with the wrong kind of training or no training at all, and now have blown through all of the money that they saved to train and embark on a career as an independent trader. And what I want to tell you is that we can do better than that for the trading community and for those with a passion for trading. So let's start the right way. However, before I go on, I do have to say that this is not for everyone. Okay, so if you're someone who's looking to get rich quick or who thinks that you'll become a six or seven figure trader without some real effort, this is not the webinar for you. You have to understand that to become a consistently profitable trader, you must train, have a real strategy with an actual real world edge, find a system that fits your personality and cognitive strength, build best practices into habit so you can grow and master your edge and you got to be realistic about your learning curve and those who tell you otherwise are mistaken at best and misrepresenting you intentionally at worst okay we've trained hundreds of traders for our PL firm over the last 10 years or so this is what we do we're just sharing with you what the market and all that experience working with new traders has taught us so if you are up to the challenge of becoming a consistently profitable trader, keep listening. And so by the end of this webinar, you're also going to know the exact strategy that the traders on our desk use to find the best stocks to trade during the trading day. Okay, Finding the right stocks to trade during a trading session from the universe of thousands of stocks is literally half the battle. And as our co-founder Mike Bellafura wrote in One Good Trade, you are only as good as the stocks you trade. You see, a huge part of the reason most retail traders underperform or outright fail is simply because they're trading the wrong stocks. What you trade is as important as how you trade. Learning this one thing, stock selection, can be a game changer and transform your trading results virtually overnight. And actually, in just a few moments, you're going to be learning how the professional traders in our firm do this day in and day out. Now, once you've learned this crucial lesson, trading stocks in play, without which it's unlikely you'd ever have the chance to become consistently profitable and in any meaningful way, you'll be learning one of our firm's best and most consistent proprietary trade setups. It's a setup that our traders take advantage of regularly and we'll be opening our doors and giving you an inside look into what it is and exactly how to trade it. Now learning this kind of rigorously tested and highly profitable setup can make all the difference in your trading. Again, you must be trading setups with edge in the real world of complex markets. It can't be theoretical, it can't be back-tested stuff. Or else you're just gonna end up banging your head against the wall with consistently unprofitable results. And that's true no matter how hard you work, how nice of a person you are, how well-intentioned you are, how passionate you are about trading, and how many computer screens you have set up in your home office. Top traders 
trade setups with a real world tested edge, period, full stop. Okay, so in addition to that, you'll be learning another proprietary trade setup that we teach to all new traders on our desk. Now, why do we teach beginners this setup specifically? Well, because of its simplicity and its high win rate. And this one is so good that many traders at the firm build filters to alert them to every time this setup hits so they don't miss it. We want them armed with alerts to this simple and powerful risk reward opportunity. This is one high accuracy, excellent risk reward setup that you will want to learn. And you are going to be learning that right here in this webinar. Okay. Now, here's the real big thing for your trading progress about all this. These setups have worked so well and so consistently for us over the years that serious students and traders who have the dedication and commitment to learn and practice them with the correct mindset can significantly improve their trading and trading results very quickly. Okay, Which is why, after we teach you all of them on this webinar today, we're also going to share with you how you could potentially become a funded trader at our firm trading remotely from your own home without risking your own capital. So if like most traders having a small trading account and not enough trading capital is an issue for you, this could be the game changer you've been looking for. Very few traders outside the inner circle of Wall Street ever get the opportunity to be funded and backed by a proprietary trading desk, especially while trading from their own homes. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to stick around for that. I mean, thousands apply to be hired as a new trader at our firm every single year. And we might hire maybe 10 or 15 per year for trading our desk in New York City. But today, we're gonna to be offering a path for you to get hired, funded, and grow with our trading firm all from your own home. And the home run for us in trading education is for our best students to become fully funded home-based traders. Or if they want to make the move to New York and trade live on our desk, that would be great too. There are many examples of this happening at our firm. So the most serious of you could become that next success story of which we are very proud. So as you see, this is a webinar that is jam-packed with opportunity for you where you're gonna be learning vital trading lessons and again, getting opportunities you can't get elsewhere. Look around in the whole trading education space. You have educators saying they're pros, but how many of them have a New York trading firm with 50 plus traders trading capital actively every single day and who have been doing so for over a decade consistently? This is a rare opportunity here. And because of that, it's in your self-interest to be super focused and take a lot of notes, okay? The best traders developed at our firm were also the best students when they were in training. I can remember the focus of one of our top seven-figure traders, who we call Shark, during his training. I mean, he outworked everyone. He was present and a sponge for all the lessons that we taught. So make sure you put your cell phone on silent, log off from all social media, and basically just get rid of anything that could distract you for the next couple of hours. In fact, at our firm, if any trainees are caught looking at their phones while we're teaching, they're kicked out of the trading room. Okay, so embrace this opportunity right here and right now to improve your trading game with your full focus. We're not going to be sending out any recording of this webinar, so you do not want to miss a thing. So you want to be like Shark. Okay, and you're actually going to be hearing from him in this webinar towards the end. And in fact, to provide extra motivation for you to really focus and stick around and intently watch the entire webinar, we're going to give those traders who stay till the end an absolutely incredible bonus. And that bonus is the setup that turned one of our firm's traders into a seven-figure consistent, as they say, money-making machine. Okay, this trader loved this setup so much that he actually dedicated himself to it and mastered it. And it's such a powerful and profitable setup that it literally made him a million dollar a year trader. And if you stick around and watch the webinar intently until the end, you will have this setup for your trading playbook. Okay, now 
Having said all that, let's jump right into the good stuff. And let's do that by giving you a quick tour of our firm so you can get a feel of the environment that produced the professional strategies and setups you're about to learn. Okay, so we're just gonna roll some video here uh, that we recently filmed and then we'll jump right back on the mic. We founded SMB Capital in 2006 and the goal from day one was to build the best proprietary trading firm on the street. We set up shop here in New York City and the idea both from my partner Mike Bellafieri and myself had was we really needed to build a comprehensive training program to deal with the complexity of the markets today. Um, things have changed quite a bit since we began our careers and so we'd already been trading more than a decade when we started the firm. The idea was spend quite a bit of time and resources building up this comprehensive training program. And, and that's become our reputation over the years is SMB has the most comprehensive training. Um, and that's our background. After college, both of us went to graduate school and we firmly believe um, in the skills that you can develop through education and practice. And so when traders come into the firm, um, and I think we have about 40 traders on our desk now, trading on site, as well as um, many uh, on a remote basis around the country, and some even in other countries. They are given comprehensive training from day one, and then practical training once they begin trading our capital live. And, and we are also a, a team structure, meaning the most successful traders on our desk who will also become good mentors and coaches will lead teams and they by the time they become a team leader they've been trading for three or four years they are seven figure traders meaning they're making over a million dollars a year and what we're seeing from from the most successful traders on our desk is not only these high levels of p l production but a level of consistency and so it, it would be typical for for the senior guys on the desk to making tens of thousands of dollars a day, but rarely to see them lose that much money uh, in a day. And that really comes down to, from day one, the, the, the best practices and habits that we teach them to develop, as well as the trading strategies, are designed to have very high risk reward. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the inside look into our prop firm in New York City. Now, as you just saw, we're not playing around here. Okay, remember, this is an important difference between this and any previous webinar that you have watched. 85% of our time is spent building our P&L trading desk. We're not some trading education entity that makes all of this money just selling education. Okay, we're not just some online education company without a physical presence like our New York office where our traders are really trading firm capital every single day. We're not like those educators without profitable traders making money from their so-called great trading strategies and techniques. I mean, sure, they'll claim that they do, but ask yourself how many can actually show you an entire trading form in the heart of the financial capital in the world, unequivocally proving that they actually do. And although we do have the top training program on the street, our primary business is trading the markets. And we are very serious about the work we do in developing our traders into seven figure earners and beyond. Now, you might be asking yourself why we're even willing to teach our proprietary trading strategies to independent traders. Why not just keep them proprietary and let our traders make millions of dollars from the markets? Well, there is a very good reason for that. Okay, we have studied and studied and studied the top traders at our firms. And we did so to find the commonalities among them so we could hire more like them. You see, the old Wall Street model is to hire Ivy League educated new hires and then turn them into great traders. But our studies have found that the top traders do not only come from Ivy League schools. Our co-founder, Steve Spencer, did graduate from Wharton. And back in the day, you did need to graduate from an Ivy League school or know someone, or be some kind of Division One athlete. 
but we found from primary source research that the top traders come in many different shapes, sizes, ages, backgrounds, personality, and cognitive strengths. And frankly, it's a mistake to hire only one type of background to build your best firm. We are only as good as the traders we train. And so we need to train the right traders to be successful. But they come from many different backgrounds. And yes, we hire 10 to 15 traders a year through an HR process looking for traders who are like our star traders. But we want to expand our universe of potentially successful traders even more. We want to be giving risk capital to even more traders with talent and edge that fit our culture. So we took all of our internal training programs that we use to rigorously train new traders on our desk and we offered them online to independent retail traders willing to prove themselves to us through their training and trading results. We opened our trading to the world so we could increase our access to talented traders for the firm to hire, develop, and fund. Okay? And at the same time, by doing this, we also had the goal of helping independent traders learn truly legitimate trading techniques with edge so they don't continue losing their money on simplistic and often indicator-based techniques that are taught out there but don't actually make money. I mean, these trading educators soil the work of the good top educators. They misteach the trading community and they frustrate new traders and those like us who then have to spend time differentiating ourselves from them. But our goals are being accomplished despite all this. Independent traders have signed up to our training programs and then some of them have done so well and become so profitable that they send us their broker statements to show us how well they're doing with our strategies and how well they fit our culture of work ethic and we'd end up hiring them to trade on our desk in New York City. And we just love these stories. We are so proud of these traders. And even if there's many that choose to remain independent and just use what we teach them to make money for themselves, we're proud of that as well because we're helping them. Admittedly, it is rare for an independent trader to turn down an invitation to join the desk if we give them one. Uh, but it has happened from time to time and we still root for those guys and we remain close with those independent traders. So anyway... In this way, we became able to grow our trading desk in a whole new way that the rest of Wall Street was ignoring. And now we're actually just as known for our top-notch training program that we don't keep secret like the rest of Wall Street as we are for the trading firm itself. And on top of that, we're now innovating even further by opening up our funding of traders to those trading from their own homes. And that way, giving people all over the world access to capital, technology, training, coaching, mentoring, and giving us access to trading talent the world over. All right, so having said that, you're about to enjoy the fruits of all this innovation in trading education by getting to learn some of our best proprietary trading strategies and setups for free. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on the co-founder of SMB Capital, Stephen Spencer. Thanks for that kind introduction. Today I'm going to teach two topics that every trainee on our desk learns before they're allowed to trade our money. The first topic is one that is taught beginning on their first day of training. And the underlying principle behind this topic is you are only as good as the stocks that you trade. In other words, to be in the right stocks, you must learn proper stock selection. If you're tra placing trades in the wrong stocks, You'll have very few winners and your losers will be larger than they need to be. And as we go through the lecture, you'll, it will become clear and you'll understand why. Now, there are two things that are important to the short-term trader. These, these two overarching principles are what allow short-term traders to control their risk and make outsized gains in the marketplace. The first one is liquidity. And the second one is volatility. And the way that I like to refer to these two things are sufficient liquidity and sufficient volatility. Now, there's no better way to identify these two things than the SMB pre-market scanner and learning the skill of pre-market stock selection. So this skill that we're going to be talking about today, and you're going to, you're going to start to learn about pre-market stock selection, is 
part of a larger lecture that I teach all the traders on our desk. And although it's only approximately 20% or so of the material taught on this very important topic, it is enough to give you a trading edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the SMB scanner. I'm going to show you the three criteria that I use to identify the most in-play stocks for any given day. And when I say the most in-play stocks, what I mean are the stocks that will offer the highest risk-reward trades. And we're going to look at the scanner, and then I'm going to look at, um, I'm going to show you some charts for the stocks that we identify as the best stocks in the scanner. And what you'll see is, as part of the process of our pre-market stock selection, we identify the most important price levels to get involved in trades. And this is very different than most people that get involved in the marketplace. Most people come into the market and they hear about this stock or that stock, and they have no idea that by identifying trading that goes on, goes, goes on before the market opens at 930, by doing that, you can find the best stocks to trade and the levels where you need to get involved. Um, and this is a big deal. And you're just not going to really hear this in other places. And, and frankly, the most common thing that you'll hear if you watch a video or, or you read a lecture of some sort, um, what you'll be told is the most important things are to know where a stock opens at 9.30 a.m. and where it closes at 4 p.m. And so it completely ignores the topic that you're going to be learning about today. And this topic is based on my experience have, for having traded for more than 20 years and kind of coming up with techniques to, to how to trade consistently and profitably. And so this is, is just not something you're going to see somewhere else. Okay, so let's get started. Here is a picture of the SMB scanner, a little snapshot. And there are three criteria that we're going to look at. What we're looking at are average daily volume, volume percentage, and gap percentage. So let's define what these things are and kind of the, the thresholds that we need to get into the best stocks. So the first one is average daily volume. And this one actually will depend on your skill level. So the most novice trader on the desk, usually we like to look for a, a million share average daily volume, and then that will go down as traders become more experienced to 500,000, and then maybe even eventually down to 100,000. So at the beginning, um, and by the way, the scanner is completely customizable. If we look at, if we look at this next, next picture here, um, you can actually plug in what your trigger volume is in the pre-market, the average minimum volume, and a bunch of other things. And so what that helps us do is when we're looking at the scanner before the market opens, is it's not going to give us false positives. It's not going to cause a less experienced trader to get involved in a more difficult stock. Um, and so that's a great thing about that. So as we're looking at the scanner for this particular day, um, there were two that met our three criteria. The second criteria is volume percentage. That is the amount of volume as a percentage of the average daily volume in a stock that is trading before the market opens. And so typically I'll sit down at my desk uh, and start doing my pre-market prep 90 minutes before the open or maybe a little bit more. And the key that 90 minutes before is at 8 a.m., that's when the large institutions start to place orders into the marketplace. It's not actually at 9.30. Yes, there's a large surge of volume at 9.30 a.m., but many institutions will like to get a head start, and we'll see a pop in volume at 8 a.m., and when we look at some of these charts, you'll see that. And so what I like to see is a minimum in this, this number here of 10. Anything over 10, we'll take a look at. Anything close to 50 is what I term super in play, and that usually goes right to the top of my list when I'm doing my morning game plan. And then the final criteria, the third criteria we look at to find the best intraday stocks to trade is gap percentage. And what this, what this um, column shows is the amount that the stock is trading in the pre-market away from the prior day's trading close. And so what that generally ensures is um, a minimum gap of 5% is that you will get some intraday volatility. And so with these three categories together, we get sufficient liquidity and sufficient volatility. And those are the things that we need for the best stocks to trade. Um, so why don't we take a look at a chart? So here's the first one. So we found this from the scanner. Um, we saw that it was gapping a, a, quite a bit from the prior day's close, and it was doing a lot of pre-market volume. In fact, if we see here, as I mentioned to you, at 8 a.m., the institutions start to make trades. And you can see the volume spike right up here, and it's doing um, over 100,000 shares every couple of minutes. And between 8 and, 30, 8 and 8.30, a lot of volume. And what is it doing while it's doing that volume? It's maintaining higher prices. We see that earlier, some news, news came out that caused it to move higher, and it trended higher for about $2.5. And, 
And then as the institutions came in, even though there was a little bit of selling, it came back, it held this very large gap. And so we know coming into the market open that a lot of people wanted to buy this stock in the pre-market. And although some people may have sold it because it was up at much higher prices wanting to take profits, it maintained a very large gap. And so our bias coming in is on the long side because of this, this, this pre-market trend to the upside of two and a half points. And then very clearly you can see on this small pullback from 62, a lot of buying at 61.35 and it holds here for about 20 minutes. It holds here again after 8.30 and it comes up in two more times, it comes up to $62 where there's some selling pressure, but it's in a very tight range. And what I'm gonna to look to do when the market opens is buy it as close to the bottom of the range as I can. And once I get kind of confirmation as it moves on, uh, above the top of the range, get it to that position and look to trade um, for a trend higher. So let's take a look and see what happened when the market opened. So the market opens, and you can see right when the market opens, what, what, what happens very commonly is when a stock is gapping to much higher prices, some people will come in and take profits. Um, but what we would like to see is where it was being bought in the pre-market, it defended at that price. And that, in fact, is exactly what happens. You can see it comes down to that price and very quickly gets back above 61.50. And then on the next bar, it goes to pre-market resistance. And then on the next two bars, it holds above pre-market resistance. So this is kind of what I would call an idealized setup. And, you know, I was entering initially... Um, towards the bottom of this consolidation range. And then I added to the position above the top of the range. And what that did was it put me in a position of strength to take advantage of this, this uh, over $2 trend from where I initially entered. Um, and by the way, I just there's another point that I didn't make on the intro, which I'll make now, which is when we're teaching traders on our desk to identify good risk reward trades, what we like to do is teach them to find trades setups where there's one unit of risk for five units of reward. And so in this case, when I initially entered, I was risking um, about 30, 30 cents on my initial entry, and then on my second entry here, about 20 cents. So about an average of 25 cents of, of risk based on my two entries. And what we can see is the stock eventually traded up about $2.25 about $2 from my initial entry. And so it was a better than a one to five risk reward. Um, and so and, and the, the reason why we actually teach our traders a one to five risk reward is you don't have to be right that often. If you identify really good risk reward trades, even if you're right only 30% of the time, um, you're going to be profitable over the course of a week and in the course of a month. And so many other many other teachers and traders will teach you a one to two risk reward or a one to three, um, and that you know that that's fine. You just have to have a higher win percentage to be consistently profitable. What we found is through the techniques that we teach, pre-market stock selection and a bunch of other techniques that you would learn on our desk or in our training programs, that we can get that risk reward to a much higher price. And this technique I'm showing you right now is one of the ways to do that. And so that's gonna allow you at the beginning when your, your trading skills aren't so good, you might, you might hit out of a stock too early or you might sell it too soon. Um, that better risk reward is gonna allow you to get the profitability, consistent profitability sooner. So I wanna take a look at the scanner again and let's take a look at, a, at another example. And the other thing to see is here, I've kind of done a screenshot for you. In many days, you will only have one or maybe two stocks that meet all these three criteria like this. And that's fine because you, this is, these are the best of the best setups. And so, and so if you only have one or two a day that fit all three of these categories, that's fine because the majority of the time, you're gonna be able to identify very good risk reward setups and you're going to be able to make money. And also they're not the only way that we, we teach stock selection in our training programs and on our desk. And when we do the recap, I'll show you some of the other ways. As I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, this really is only 20% of this of what I teach on this topic. And so we'll find through those other through those other methodologies, we might find a few more setups for any given day, or a few more stocks for any given day. So in this case, 39% is our volume percentage in the pre-market. Our average daily trading volume is over 3 million, which is well above our minimum requirement requirement even for a novice trader on the desk and the gap percentage over 20 percent well above our five percent minimum it's already traded over a million shares in the pre-market so let's see let's see the price pattern in the pre-market where we can identify our key levels where we want to get involved and by the way this applies to both either the long side or the short side when we identify these levels most times we are prepared to trade the stock either on the long side or the short side and that, that type of mental flexibility is another way that we teach our traders to become consistently profitable and make more money in the market. Um, many times people will teach or, or, they, or their emphasis will only be being able to trade the market long or being able to trade the market short. And they'll have their arguments for why it makes sense to do one or the other. But, but quite frankly, um, 
over time, the biggest traders, the most successful traders are being able to develop that skill to trade on both sides. Um, so here's the pre-market. The news comes out initially, and you can see it moves higher about $2.5. Uh, but what's different about that first example, if you recall, is after it made that big uptrend in the market, we saw that it moved sideways. And so we initially we were going to have a very strong bias on the long side because it held the initial move, and as volume came in, it held that, that large price increase. In this case, um, after that initial price increase, uh, it came back down to kind of where the move started. And there were some buyers here. You can see 23 and then the buyer steps up to about 23.50 and holds here again and steps up a little bit higher um, and moves up about a dollar and a half from the pullback low. And you can see that happens when the institutions start buying at 8 a.m. There's a volume spike here. It holds. There's another volume spike here. It's moved, had moving higher. And even when the volume spikes again, it, it's holding higher prices. But it's a good setup. It's a good stock that we identified metal three of our criteria, but not, not the perfect price action that we saw in the first example. So let's see. And then again, going into the open, I'm going to look to trade it on the long side if it comes in where there were buyers in the pre-market at this 23 level or this 23.50 level. And if it spikes to the upside to the pre-market high, I'm going to look to see if those sellers are still there because I might trade it on the short side down to this level or if it fails at this level all the way back down to the pre-market lows. And so when the market opens, what you can see is right on the open, you can see this very long wick. Um, where it did get up to about the pre-market high and came down very quickly. So for most traders, it's going to be difficult to capture that move on the short side very quickly, put it in order. In this case, um, I was able to capture that initially. And then um, another point I want to actually, this makes a drive home this point, and another thing that you would kind of learn about it in our training programs is in the first 15 to 20 minutes, there are no real trends. Generally, you do have a lot of this up and down. Um, and then after 10 o'clock, we start to, to see stocks will have intraday uptrends or intraday downtrends. And so this period here, messy, is not that uncommon for the first 15 or 20 minutes. What's unusual in this case is that it lasted for about an hour and an hour and a half. And so it was quite difficult. If you were looking to kind of after the initial down move and you saw it was bought and you know you were looking for it to hold above this, um, that's fine. There was a long trade here when it finally started to hold above. Um, but then it came back up to the area where it failed in the pre-market and it was sold again a little bit lower. So this was an opportunity to enter on the short side. One more time, it comes up here, it fails again. And so in this case, there was, there was an opportunity to be short between 25.30 and 25.50 with about, again, 25, 30 cents in risk. Most of these stocks that are under $50, you never have to risk more than 30 cents. Um, and then what you can see is in the afternoon, um, as it comes in and tests the support here, it eventually breaks down and comes down about a dollar and a half. And so as I mentioned, um, in most of these stocks, these lower price stocks, risking 20 to 30 cents is the norm. And if you're going to see a $1 to $2 move, uh, once again, it fits that better than $1 to $5 risk reward. And so in this case, as the volume came in, and this is another technique we use in short-term trading, if something breaks through a level and there's an increase in volume, a sharp increase in volume, we want to take that trade every time. And so it breaks below the blue line, and then it breaks below the morning support right here, and there's a momentum trade to the downside and heavy volume. So even if you only got involved below the morning support at 24 and a quarter, it went down about a dollar or so eventually before bottoming out. Um, not quite, you know, a huge risk reward, but certainly better than a one to three risk reward. I want to take a look at a couple more examples. Um, here is one down here where it's just about our minimum, um, around 10% on the volume percentage in the pre-market. Um, two and a half times our minimum volume threshold for the novice trader, 2.4. Um, and then the gap percentage is very big. And when you put these three together, it's another example of something that we would definitely want to take a look at uh, and, and potentially make a trade at off of the levels that we identify in the pre-market. And again, not to beat a dead horse here, um, or drum a dead horse, whatever that expression is, um, the, this technique of identifying these stocks, the best stocks in the pre-market, and then looking at where the volume is in the pre-market is going to give you a huge edge over the average person that comes into the marketplace. They're not going to. They're not going to identify this, these stocks. Or in some cases, let's say for example, just randomly, they have some other technique where they identified some of the stocks that I'm teaching you how to identify in the pre-market. What I'll often get, um, and you know, I'm on stock quits and Twitter, is I'll get a question and they'll say, "Hey, Steve, I thought I had this great stock, you know, ABC today, and I thought it was very in play, and you know, I got lost on the long side, I got lost on the short side, and I and I will say, well, where did you get long? Where did you get short?" And it's based off of these levels after the market opened, and they hadn't even identified these pre-market levels where we can where we can really know are the buyers in control or are the sellers in control. And ultimately, how we develop good risk-reward 
with trades um, in short-term trading is understanding our buyers in control, our sellers in control. And this is one of the techniques that you're taught. There's a few other things that we look at and we teach in the training programs and on our desk, but this is one of the ways that we judge our buyers or sellers in control. And this person or people who ask me these questions, they have no idea how to identify and, and, and use that, that, that skill set. So we're looking at this one here in the pre-market, and we can see it's a pretty wide range for a $50 stock. About 4680 is the low, 4835 or so is the high. Um, and what I notice after the large range is established, the buyers step up a little bit here at around 47.35. Twice it's tested, um, but it can't get above 48. So I know 48, there might be some sellers on the open. There might be some sellers at 48.35. If quickly those sellers disappear and the buyers step up above that, I know I want to be long. Um, if it comes down to the bottom of the pre-market range, I'm going to see if the buyers are still there um, as a possible long. And ultimately, if it breaks through the bottom of the pre-market range, I will then change my bias to the short side. So let's see what this one did. So... We look, we have the pre-market consolidation here. Um, first move was a dropout right to that, where I said they're, well, not quite to where the buyers were at 47.35, but a little bit closer, and then quickly rips above the pre-market resistance areas. So there's a momentum long. I got long in this case. It went up a dollar. I took some profits, and eventually, though, I was stopped out here when it came back down below this blue line, blue line on this bar and heavy selling. So it was a small winner, nothing to, to write home about. But again, I'm in the right stock. I'm in at the right prices. The momentum when it got above here, you could see was very clear, but it was some sellers emerged and pushed it right back down. By taking profits, some profits on the initial move, large move here of over a dollar, I protected my downside and got a small winner. I want to look at one more example. This is an example we did about a uh, first criteria, about an average uh, shares of a million, average daily volume of a million shares, right below that. Uh, volume, 38%, very close to super in play, that 50% threshold we talked about earlier, and well above the minimum of 5% gap percentage. So here's our pre-market action. Um, there's a seller here at 14.85. There's a buyer. Uh, there's some buyers here at 14 and a quarter or so. We look at 9 o'clock as it gets closer to the open. As I mentioned earlier, at 8 a.m., you get some institutions putting orders. And sometimes at 9 o'clock, as you get closer to the open, you not only have institutions, but you have retail traders larger, more experienced traders jumping in as well. And you can see people recognize, wow, this thing's gapping up already. There's more people buying. It takes out the pre-market high from 8 a.m. And initially coming in, we're going to be thinking long. As long as it's above this 1485 to 15 area here, we're thinking the buyers are in control. It's doing a ton of volume coming into the, the final 30 minutes before the open. So what happens right on the open? Um, the first move is up above, uh, above the pre-market high. Um, there's a momentum buy right there. If you didn't buy into the momentum because it was a little bit too risky, you had a consolidation, three bars across, and so you saw it holding above 1580. And then there was another momentum buy when it took out the morning high. And then it trended for the next few hours, um, much better than a one to five risk reward. A $15 stock, $16 stock, you're never risking more than 20 cents or so. And this thing moved um, over $3 from the open. So another, you know, another great example of much better than a one to five. Um, and, and really, really heavy volume, very liquid, liquid stock. So I want to go, I want to do a quick recap for you and talk about the criteria we use, the benefits of this technique, and why you're going to have a big advantage and a big edge over the other people who are getting involved in the market. So here's our three selection criteria, volume percentage, that's our pre-market volume. We want to see that the minimum 10% you know, by 8, 8.30. Um, and the next one is average daily volume. For novice traders, we want to see that as about a million shares at least. Um, for the most inexperienced traders, um, we know it's going to do a multiple of that when we have uh, it's in play in the pre-market at least usually three to five times the average daily volume. Um, and finally, the gap percentage over five percent will show us will give us volatility. And so, when we when we when we have these three criteria and it meets our three criteria, um, this is going to do a bunch of things. It's going to give us a higher win rate, and the reason it's going to give us a higher win rate is the stocks are much more likely to make large moves off of these important prices we identify in the pre-market. And if we stick with our discipline and we identify those prices and we understand that we're going to be long above the key prices and short below the key prices, we're going to have a very high win rate. And so those win rates for a typical person coming into the marketplace, you know, if they do everything perfectly and they don't understand these techniques that we teach, maybe they're at 50%. You understand these techniques, combine it with the other things that you'll learn, you can, you can have win rates of better than 70 or 80%. And we see that on our trading desk with, with the traders who learn these techniques and they're highly disciplined. We see that. Um, and so 
The other thing is, and the second thing, which is imp very important on our desk and ultimately is going to be important to you as, as a, a trader trying to perhaps learn to trade the markets for a living, is have scalable trades. And so this technique, um, because we talked about the idea of there's going to be good liquidity, um, much more liquidity than the average stock you would just pick, you would pick based on some other technique or at random, you're going to have scalable trades. And what does that mean? At the beginning of your career or beginning um, to learn how to trade as a novice in the market, you're going to trade with the minimum lot size of 100 shares or maybe two or 300 shares. Um, and you might learn to become consistently profitable and make a few hundred dollars a day. But ultimately, if you crunch the numbers on that, you know, at that, at that low level, maybe you're over the course of a year, you're a fifty to $100,000 a year trader. Well, our goal on our desk is once we get traders to consistent profitability is to scale them to seven figures, which is a million dollars or more. And I imagine if you're going to devote this as your career, you want to be a larger trader as well. So you have to be in stocks that are scalable. And what does that mean? It means from at the beginning of your career, going from 100, a few hundred shares to going to 10,000 shares, 20,000 shares or more. And so you can do the math there. And so ultimately, um, many of the traders on our desk as they become consistently profitable, will move them to trading much larger positions, 20,000 shares or more, and then they can become seven figure traders um, and up. Um, and then the final thing, which is don't underestimate how big this is, especially as somebody starting out outside a, outside a proprietary trading firm, which you might be trading your own money, trading your own retail account, is avoiding large losses. The stocks that we identify with this technique, it is extremely, extremely rare to have a large loss if you follow the rules that you are taught. And what do I mean by that? Maybe a few times a year at most. And, and many times you won't have large losses during the year um, many times. And so, but if you're not using these techniques, you could have large losses on a monthly basis. And those, if you have small losses and large losses over the course of a month, that adds up and it wipes out your trading account. It's what we call in the trading business blowing up. So these are huge benefits, higher win rates, um, which is gonna make you more, more consistent, easily reach consistent profitability, scalable trade, so you can become a low, you know, five-figure trader to a mid-seven-figure trader over the course of time, and then ultimately avoid large losses, which lowers your blow-up risk of being eliminated from the marketplace. So all of those things are, 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 are big. One of them in themselves would probably be enough, you know, to, for this technique to be of great value. And then finally, I just wanted to show you kind of when I do lecture on this thing, um, of stock selection, of the skill of stock selection. There are other things that you will learn. As I mentioned at the top, 20%, you're gonna learn, um, you learn today about these basic ideas, um, and you'll learn a lot more as you, you know, go through our training programs or you're invited to join our desk. These are all these other topics that we go through. And when you put these together, the, edge that, the edges that I just talked about, the benefits and the avoiding of these catastrophic losses, the, the benefits get, get magnified and the risks get minimized. And so, I just wanted to, to leave you with that thought. I'm gonna come back a little bit later and teach you a, a, another technique, a trading setup that is very popular on a desk and is simple, can be learned by the novice traders. Um, after you hear the second lecture, lecture, I'll be back to teach you this final thing. Thanks. All right, great. I wanna to talk to you guys now about a pretty powerful trade. We call it the changing fundamentals trade. The goals for this section of the webinar are to add a winning trade to your playbook, to teach you the changing fundamentals trade, to share an example of a changing fundamentals trade from a junior trader on our desk, to clearly outline the variables of this trade, and to arm you with a powerful setup with Edge for your trading. This is a whiteboard that sits inside of our training room at SME Capital in New York City. And one of the things that I feel fortunate about is that I get a look into how all the really big day traders make money. I certainly see a lot of them here at SMB. I've got a lot of friends at a lot of other places. And you can really narrow down the way the big traders make most of their money into strategies with edge. And if you're not trading strategies with edge, no matter how ambitious, how smart, how great your psychology is, how dedicated, how disciplined, you're not gonna make money. You have to trade strategies with Edge. And we teach our guys internally at SMB the strategies with Edge and let them then play with those strategies. And one of those strategies is certainly the changing fundamentals trade. I'll say one more thing about this presentation that's important. This is something that sits on our trading floor and 
I wrote this up on one of the whiteboards that is closest to our biggest traders. And it certainly is relevant to what you guys are doing today. And it comes from an African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And today right here, we're going to go together. We're going to teach you a trade with edge together that's going to help you go far. With the changing fundamentals trade, you're going to learn one of the best risk reward trades for your playbook. It's very rare not to see multiple setups daily with changing fundamentals trades. It's going to supercharge your earning season P&L. You're going to see multiple day opportunities. Works for different trading styles. So when I say it works for different trading styles, that means scalpers, swing traders, intraday swing traders, the whole gamut of the different ways people look at markets. And then you're going to have multiple day opportunities in these setups to play around with. These are going to be things in play day one, day two, day three, day four. You're going to find clean trading stocks. So I know a lot of you get frustrated, particularly at the beginning of your trading career, getting stopped out on Wix. The setup that I'm going to talk about today is clean. It's cleaner than other setups. It's scalable trade. Scalable so you can trade this with size. This is not something that you can only trade with 100 shares or 200 shares. You can trade this really big. It's one of the first trades that we teach to our new hires on our desk. So you're getting a look into what we're teaching our P&L fully backed proprietary traders at our firm. You can build a career around this one trade. And we do this all together. So you're going to get a glimpse into this trade. I'm going to walk you through it and we're going to learn together. Without the changing fundamentals trade, hey, you might be missing one of the best trade setups. You might, be, you might be missing that trade that makes or breaks your trading career. I've seen that on our desk. There are guys that take one trade and build a career out of it. And if not for that trade, they would be underperforming. You might be sitting there not in the best trading opportunities daily without this trade. Trading is potentially going to be more difficult. You're going to be looking at lesser setups for you. Certainly, there's going to be increased trading frustration. Your learning curve is going to be longer. And you'll see underperformance with your P&L if you're attacking markets as an active trader. All right, changing fundamentals trade. Let's talk about the variables for it. You need a news catalyst that possesses changing fundamentals that are significant. Margins for the company are improving. Full year guidance for the company is improving. Market share is improving. The core of the business is improving. There's a new product that they're bringing to market. On the negative side, Perhaps there's a government investigation. Yesterday, we thought X about the company. Today, from the long side, we think a lot more about the company. Their prospects are a lot stronger. They're announcing something about their margins or guidance or the government or market share or core of their business or a new product that is potentially going to cause Wall Street to think differently about this company. This is something that can trend for multiple days. Big money traders are going to put their money to work when they see changing fundamentals trades. We're looking for stocks that gap up or down 3% or more to confirm that our changing fundamentals are significant. We went R of all above three relative volume. That essentially means there's much more volume on this day than there normally is in the stock. That means there's much more interest in the stock. And that means the direction is more likely to continue. This is something that we're putting on our SMB AM sheet each and every morning for our traders to prepare. These are the stocks that we are going to first. This is, for my personal trading, this is the first thing I'm going to. What has the changing fundamentals? Let me find it, let me start to prepare. Why this trade works is because you've got people with big money who are putting their money to work and they trade a lot bigger than you and they're like a cruise ship. When they start to really want to buy a company because of its changing fundamentals that are significantly positive, they can't just do it in an hour. It takes them days. And so they start in a direction and they tend to continue in that direction. Think of that cruise ship. Think of somebody who's sitting on a big, big trading desk who's got $500 million overall to trade with. 
and they have now just stumbled across a hundred million dollar idea and other peers like them are seeing the same thing. There's a lot of money going into this idea. These guys, they get started in a certain direction and they can't turn it around. All right, changing fundamentals, intraday swing trade. So you can, you can take this trade and you can break it up into lots of different trades. If you're a scalper, you can find value in this. If you're a swing trader, you can find value in this. If you're an arb trader, you can find value in this. I'm gonna talk about it from the intraday swing trading perspective today. Intraday swing trade means I'm looking for something that I can hold for hours during an intraday. I don't wanna to have to do a lot to it. I just wanna sort of set it and watch it. You want something with a significant news catalyst. You want something that's up over 3%. I'm gonna do this from the long side. You want an R vol of three or higher, relative volume of three or higher. You want it holding above VWAP. VWAP is an indicator all you can put on your charts. It is the measurement of where institutions are buying and selling stock. When something is holding above VWAP consistently, that is very bullish. We're looking for a clear staircase higher intraday chart, making higher highs and higher lows. You want the opportunity to get past 10, 15 a.m. Eastern time or the period of price discovery. The first 45 minutes of the day is what we call price discovery. We want to get our intraday swing trade set up to be past that opening period of price discovery. You might call it the open. The open can be jittery, non-directional. No longer term technical resistance near. So on our longer term charts, you want clean sailing so we don't get stuck with overhead resistance. We're gonna call this a trade to hold until there's a reason to sell. We're in it, we're looking for a reason to sell. Our hands are off until we see that, see that reason to sell. And this is a high of day candidate. This is something that could end the day at its very high. All right, so let's talk about an example. One of our junior traders put this together. When we're breaking down trades, we do so with certain variables. So you'll see that here with this junior trader's description. We're looking at the big picture. What are the intraday fundamentals? What's the news in it? Technicals, long-term and intraday. Reading the tape. What's the tape telling us about this particular trade? Intuition. What do we feel about whether this is gonna go up? And trade management. You can play around with this template, but the key here is that you wanna be looking with your trades as setups with variables and you wanna be breaking down and archiving your best setups in what we call a playbook. Inside of the training program, which we're talking about right now, there's a long chapter and webinar on this very topic. How do you create your playbook? Big picture. So in this case, our junior traders mapping out spies trending up and above you up all day. So we got a strong market overall. We're typing up XRT. XRT is the ETF for retail stocks. This stock happens to be a retailer. So he's looking at how XRT, how that ETF is doing. So this is gonna give us more confidence. Spires are strong. The ETF is strong. The sector is strong. It's gonna give us more confidence on the long side. Intraday fundamentals. So this particular stock reports, and you can see for the full year, <clears throat> EPS of 440 versus 437. Beats by a little bit. Next quarter, EPS and revenue are up. Revenue for the quarter is up a little bit. Beats on the EPS. But online sales are up 50% at the time, which is, in this case, a very key theme for the investors. So this is not an ordinary earnings report. You know, all right, they beat by a little bit. They raised for the guidance the whole year. That's good. But what's great, what's capturing our attention on this particular day is that a core part of their business, which is very important for growth, has blown it out. They've crushed it. They're showing that growth. If I'm sitting on a big institutional desk and I see that this company can grow so much, I'm gonna get really excited and I'm gonna put that money that I've got to work on an idea like this. I've got a lot of visibility and this company has a lot of potential for growth and I can't miss being in strong stocks, so I've gotta put my money to work. Yesterday, we thought X about the company. Today, we think much more positively about the company because in this case, a very key component of their earnings, something that deals with the core of the company, the core part of the business, is showing tremendous growth potential. The street loves growth. 
The street loves to look ahead six to nine months. It loves that. And we're getting news. We're getting changing fundamentals about the company that show us it can do better. All right, so we've got our thesis, which we think stock's going to go up, but we don't just stop there. We want to look at our long-term technicals. And in this case, you've got the stock gapping to all-time highs after it actually had run up before earnings. So we're getting a stock with no overhead resistance. That's terrific. That's one of our variables. We're looking at how the stock did after it reported and in the pre-market. One of the things that I like to see, that our desk likes to see, is we want to see the stock perform well in the after hours after it reports. We want to see it close strongly in the after hours, and we want to see it in the pre-market open up even higher than the after hours. Essentially, we want to see that momentum continuing to the upside. That's a very bullish indicator for us. And you can see right here, we got a strong move to the upside in the after hours and then the pre-market is continuing to go up and we also get a nice technical resistance level here with our pre-market tra trading high we can use that level on the open if we can get above that that's even more evidence that the stock can be stronger but this is a very bullish technical after hours and pre-market chart so the trader starts to develop a game plan You'll get better at this as you learn a little bit more. But the junior trader says that, hey, and essentially what he's doing, he's putting together a bunch of different ideas about how he's going to play this before it actually happens. He's warming up. He's rehearsing how he's going to attack this, this trade on a particular day. Very, very significant best practice for you to adopt. This trader wants to see, I want to see a hold above 93. I want to see a stock trading in a range above 94.50, the pre-market high, a wedge or a consolidation that's going to allow me to get larger. I'm going to see a stock above VWAP showing that the buyers are control. XRT and SPY are above VWAP and in an uptrend to make this an A plus trade. He wants to see an Arvel above two. So he's rehearsing what he wants to see to feel good about the long. And then he's going to think about getting in with different tiers. That's a more advanced concept. And so we open and you can see we get above that pre-market high and then we start to get a nice pull in at around 955 where we create that higher low above the pre-market high. And this junior trader is going to enter tier one with a stop below the pre-market high. We're going to see a consolidation and this junior trader wants to add two tiers and put a stop just below this consolidation and then he's going to take off into strength. And that's how he's attacking it, okay? The key takeaway from this chart is we're above those pre-market highs. We're pulling in and we're finding an area of support and we're gonna trade off of that. All right, let's talk about this in a little bit more detail and then I'm gonna roll it back. For those of you who are developing, I'm gonna talk about it in a, uh, a way that, that I would actually look at it, uh, which is a more hands-off approach than this junior trader. But, you know, and this shows you that there's different ways to look at it. This junior trader has gone through a training program. He's trading to his individual strengths. He likes to make a lot of decisions. All right. He sees that we get past the opening. We get past that price discovery stage. And we're above the top of the range. And we get a nice little area right here. So we get a nice swing entry around 10 o'clock that he wants to take. All right. You have an opportunity right there to start this position with full size. This trader takes off one tier on the pullback. He's got two tiers remaining. He sees a lower low and another lower low. He's gonna take off another tier. So he's in three tiers around 10 o'clock. Doesn't like what he's seeing. Making trade decisions, takes off a couple of two. Then he puts on a couple more after he sees consolidation here again above, above you up. All right, I think this is a, you know, even though he's a junior trader, it's a more advanced way to look at it. The way that I look at this trade and the way that it's best for you to start trading it is really to think about full size right here at 10 o'clock and to start making that trade, pulling the trigger, and then thinking about what are my reasons to exit. It's a trade to hold, so we're in. Everything's strong, we're above resistance. On our long-term charts, we're above resistance for our pre-market resistance levels. 
We've got a tremendous news catalyst behind us. We've got a great growth story that big money is going to get into. We're gapping up. Our Arval is elevated. The stock is working. The price discovery period's over. So we're, we're in a position of strength here. We want to get in this, put some money to work, put some risk to work, and then sit in it until there's a reason to exit. So literally the trade mostly is buy it and then sell it at the end of the day. Get stopped out if there's reasons to sell. I'll talk a lot more about reasons to sell in our main course that, that, that gets a little bit more detailed, but I'll walk you through some of the ideas. A, a typical way that people exit is if a trend line breaks. So you draw a trend line from where you get in, and as long as the trend line is holding, you're going to stay in the trade. Maybe another way is you have a price target in mind that hits that price target. Maybe another way you have in mind is that it ever trades below view up. Maybe another way you have in mind is if it breaks below a significant area of consolidation that it priorly made the stock go up. The, the actual variables for your reasons to exit are not that important right now for this presentation. We'll, we'll talk a lot more about it in, in our course, but you do need to sort of know that you're sitting in it and then you really don't want to get out of this until it hits the high of the day because you get so many things in your favor. You will create rules to get out of it and lock in profits called reasons to exit. But the general idea is it's a swing and you're looking for the stock to finish high a day. All right. So this trader goes through a trade review, which is a great best practice. A recap for changing fundamentals trade. Again, from the intraday swing trade perspective. And again, you can learn to trade this on a different time frame in a different way. But this is a good way, particularly when you're starting to attack this trade. So it's an intraday swing trade, a changing fundamentals trade, an intraday swing trade. You're looking for a significant news catalyst. Remember, in this case, tremendous growth with online sales. Very important to this business. The street loves it. Up over 3% in the pre-market. Optimal if above after hours highs in the pre-market and pre-market highs on the open. As we mentioned, you want to see the pre-market above the after hours highs and you want to see the open above the pre-market highs. Arval of three or higher, we got all that. Holding and consolidating above VWAP after 10.15 Eastern time, we got that. All right, that's it right here. We're above VWAP, okay, that, that area right there at around 10 o'clock. And again, it's not exactly 10.15. It's between 10 and 10.15. It's, it's after that period of price discovery. But you're getting that consolidation and holding above VWAP. You want a clean staircase higher intraday chart. You get that here. That's a clean intraday staircase chart. The reason why it's so clean is because the news catalyst is so strong, because it's above long-term resistance, because the Arval is elevated, because there's big money traders that are coming into this, because it's holding above VWAP. You're looking for something that's going up and up and up, no longer-term resistance near. This is a trade to hold until there's a reason to sell, and it's a high day candidate. Very powerful trade for your playbook. It's one of my favorite trades. It's one of the favorite trades on the desk. I hope that helps. We'll talk to you guys soon. Trade well. Thank you. Uh, I'm back to teach you uh, a very simple setup, a setup that we teach all of the traders on our desk when they begin. And this is something that can help you become consistently profitable and also, as you learn the play and get better at the play, um, make a significant amount of money. So I'm going to walk you through the basics, and this will give you a good foundation to work with. Um, it's called Second Day Plays, and it actually flows um, very nicely from, from the first thing I taught you on stock selection in pre-market game planning. And it basically is using those stocks um, on the second and third day uh, based on this simple setup. And you're going to gather data uh, on day one from the price action. And it's going to set up in one of two ways. And so the reasoning behind second day plays and, and why they work so well is that when stocks have a strong news catalyst, large institutions who have billions, if not trillions of dollars, will enter or exit positions for several days. And what that allows us to do is identify key levels on that first day where there's large supply, 
and there's an expectation when a, that a stock will have a significant move off of these prices that we identify. And that really is kind of the underlying foundation for this setup. It's very low risk, potentially very high reward. As I mentioned at the top, these are easy to learn and simple as you'll see as we go through a few examples. And we want our traders on the desk to be in as many of these setups as possible during the course of the month as they can lead to significant upside P&L. So we're gathering our information on day one after the news catalyst occurs. The trade itself will trigger on day two or day three sometimes. And there's going to be two categories and in two ways that I identify whether or not one of these stocks um, that has been in play um, is a good is a good setup for the second day play. And it's relative strength and relative weakness. So what we're looking for on the relative strength play is a stock that has closed at least one ATR or more higher for the day. It's also closed in the top 25% of its range. And that gives us an idea of really how, how strongly in demand that stock was, how much institutions were piling in and they really wanted to get long that stock. And then the flip side, the other side of the trade is what we call relative weakness, and it's really basically the same criteria, um, but the opposite. Stocks that have closed one ATR or more lower, they've closed in the bottom 25% of their range for the day. And so now we're going to take a look um, at a few examples, and so you can kind of visually see what the, these trades look like. So here's example number one, and this is example of the weak trade. We can see that it the stock in the pre-market had been a $120 stock. Um, on the open, there was very heavy selling. You can see I circled that area with a volume where there was huge selling, which drove it down um, about $7 or so in the first 30 minutes of trading. And then what happens quite often um, after a stock is gapped lower and, and been sold off quite a bit on the open is people come in, they do a little bottom fishing, um, and you can see it drifted higher, a few dollars higher in the late morning. But what happened the rest of the day, what you can see is it it trended down basically after bouncing to 116, it trended down the rest of the afternoon all the way back down to the low of the day. It closed in the bottom 10% of its range. And what I said under, under the criteria was for this setup to really trigger um, as a second day play, we needed to see it closing in the bottom 25% of the range. In this case, it's the bottom 10% of the range. So we know after a huge amount of volume was done that day, after there was a ton of selling on the open, that this stock failed in its bounce it closed just above the low, and this potentially could trigger a great short on the second day play. And so we're gonna look at the next day, and what we're gonna do is kind of highlight a couple of points and, and how to trade this. What I, what I can't do is I don't have enough time to do today is get into the details of position management, how to scale in or how to scale out or how to size up this trade to much bigger size, but of course that is something I would cover in detail during our extensive training programs. Um, as well as the training that the traders receive on our desk. And so what we can see here as in this two-day chart, we come in the next morning, and there's two points I just want to draw attention to, two prices that I want to draw attention. Number one, first point is the 114. 114 was after the stock um, came in trending down all afternoon, it had a little tiny bounce into the afternoon, and it failed at 114. What we refer to that is afternoon resistance. So the next morning when I come in, if something is set up as a second day play week as a short trade, there's two prices I want to look at. It's the low from day one, and it's the afternoon resistance, because these are two potential entries. And so right on the open, you can see it opens at around 113, it pops up to 114, and fails there. That's the spot where I would initiate a trade to get short. And then my confirmation that the trade is working and you can see I put on the chart actually enter short. This is the more conservative approach, but I would teach a newer trader or a novice trader. Um, it's, it's more of a momentum trade. You know if you're right within a few seconds usually. Um, and this is where the novice trader would enter on the break below the blue line here, below, below the prior day's low. And then the, the second spot um, where you're confirmed that the trade is now working once you've entered below the, the prior day's low is when it starts to move sideways. We call that consolidation. I probably mentioned that to you in the in the first topic I taught earlier. And then this is another spot for short-term traders. Once once a, a trend has has um, taken a pause, we can look and see 
you know, what does a consolidation look like? Is it moving sideways? Does it give us another low risk area to enter for the next wave? Um, and generally, stocks that will trend for you will have two to three waves intraday. And so this is a really good example on um, the initial entry for the novice trader, and, and I'm talking about two novice traders, probably a lot of novice traders right now. The entry there, let's say below 112.80, there was about 30 cents of risk there, and we can see it came off um, almost $4 at the low of the day. So um, that is greater than a 10 to 1 or 1 to 10 risk to reward and well well above our 1 to 5 criteria that I mentioned in the first topic that I taught. So a great example of a good risk reward trade, simple entry, simple execution. Example 2. So example 2 is actually uh, a, a, a strong example of a, a, a strong trade. Um, it closed, um, so it starts over here, and this the first picture we're looking at actually shows you both days, and I think we'll drill down a little bit better so you can see um, more detail. Um, so on day one, it was a $44 stock. It ran all the way up to 46. It's a pretty big move for a $40 stock. $2 has a small pullback, and we notice it's accumulated the rest of the day within about 50 cents of the high. So we're seeing a $2 range, and it's being accumulated in the top 25% of the range um, all day, so we know that um, Institutions are continuing to buy it. They're not letting it roll over. The first pullback stopped, tried to pull back again, tried to pull back again. They keep on stepping in and buying. So we know that our, our, we have the two spots just like um, yesterday. I actually want to, I think we have a chart here. Good. This gives us a little bit more detail. So um, in this example, it's exactly the opposite of the first example. We got a break above the prior day's high right here. So there's a simple entry above 46. In this case, it's a little bit lower price stock, so there's lower risk there. There's probably about 20 cents of risk if you got in around 46.05 or so. Um, and then similar to the first example, we had a strong uptrend, um, and then we had a sideways consolidation. So we had about a dollar up move, and then we had after the first pullback. Remember, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, after you have a strong trend, then you look at the first red bar of the pullback. We use that as, are the buyers still in control? tight consolidation, so this is your second buy area against this low right here. Um, there's even less risk if you're buying into this, let's say 46.70 or so, probably about 10 to 15 cents of risk. And then and then we are looking for it to take out the morning high here and trend higher. Um, I highlighted one area when we drill down here is because it appears that after the first up moving consolidation, the trade starts a second leg. And quite often things don't happen exactly as we want. And as it begins the second leg, it drops down. The question is, how would you handle this? If you were buying, if you were buying in here and then it had this fake breakout and it started to come down, would you would you get out of the initial buy or would you get out of the second buy? And the answer is is no. It's 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 well above the initial entry here in this consolidation. It then consolidates some more and, and closes at the high of the day. You would probably um, scale out of the majority of the position and then take some as a swing. But again, worked very well. Um, and then if we're, we're evaluating in terms of the risk reward, initial entry, we talked about 15 to 20 cents of risk here. That initial entry, you were awarded with more than $1.50 of upside. So that's better than a 1 to 10 on the initial entry. And then it looks like about a 1 to 5 on the second. So again, um, well within our risk reward or well above our risk reward requirements um, and worked out quite well. Then I think I have one more example for you. This is a weak example. Um, we can see this is another stock in the 40s, um, but just going in the opposite direction, you can see the prior close was 48. You can see gap down in the pre-market to about $45, um, came off $2. Again, another a big move, almost a 5% um, move for a stock of this price. And on the open, you can see there's a buyer here at 43. And then there's a buyer again, um, at 43 on the retest. And then there's a buyer again in the middle of the day at 43. So we have very good information that despite all of the selling, there is a huge buyer keeping the stock from breaking down below 43. And we know on day two that if that buyer is no longer there or gets fully absorbed and it drops below that price, that potentially could be a huge winner for us below that price. So let's take a look at day two. And we can see right on the open, um, it fails at the afternoon resistance here. And the I highlight a few different points for you. So let's talk about these points that I'm highlighting in the chart. Number one, um, this is the momentum entry, which I explained that novice traders, even a novice trader, this is a very good entry here because you know right away if you're right and it's very low risk. Um, below 43, the first, the first um, bar took us all the way down to 42.50. So we know the trade is working. 
on the second bar was a little bit less of a down move, but then finally we get our consolidation, which we talked about in the last example. And you can then build a position. So initial entry is what we call a momentum entry below 43. Um, my stop generally, if I enter below 43 here, would be below above 43.10. So if I got a print at 98 cents, we're talking about less than 15 cents of risk. Um, the second entry area, we define our risk by the size of the consolidation. In this case, it's about a 20 cent range but from 42 to 42 20, let's say. And if we're entering here in the, as close to 40 to the top of the consolidation as possible, it's again, it's another 20 cents or so risk. We have then a down move um, from that consolidation. So we have the trend continuing. This trade is working extremely well. And then we have a, a point here, point number three, where we can judge, is the trade still working? Do we need to get out of the trade? And the answer is no, because what it did was it came right back and retested the, the bottom of the consolidation and it failed. This is exactly what we want to see here. And then point four is, did it take out the morning low and is it holding below? And the answer to that is yes. And then finally, another big leg down. So we had our first leg down, second leg, and then finally the third leg was a big one. Um, three waves is all I generally look for for a trade intraday at most. Sometimes it's two waves, sometimes it's three. And that ended up being from the initial entry about a $3 down move on the initial risk of around 15 cents, so about a 20 to 1. So you can see why I get so excited about these examples. They are... They are high probability, they're extremely high risk to reward, they're, easy, they're simple to learn, and these are just trades that everyone should learn, and they occur on a daily basis. And so over the course of a month, um, this, this trade alone could really you know, fund you as a trader to make a living. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other setups to learn, and there's other setups to scale and get very big, um, and that's eventually how you build up to become a seven-figure trader. But this, this trade alone, second day plays, can build you a consistently profitable trader and help you build off a base at the beginning of your trading career. Um, I put in here one other point about establishing rules right on the open and after 10 a.m. This really just has to do with things move more quickly right on the open. So it's best to understand that if you're gonna enter into one of these trades in that first 15 or 20 minutes, that you may have to enter quickly on momentum. And if it's not working right away, get out. After 10 o'clock, things develop more slowly. You can build into a position more slowly and work with a work with a slower, slower trend. And then the final points are, this has to do with the review process. And this is part of the overall training that of course we teach on our desk in our in-depth training programs, which is the way these, the, the review, the review of your day and the review of your trades, as well as the review of your statistics helps you understand, do a couple of things. Number one, it helps you internalize these trades that you're making money on and it helps you get better at them because you're really, the brain has something called neuroplasticity. And what you're able to do by reviewing these trades over and over again and marking them up and, and practicing how you would trade them the next time and get better is you're actually changing your brain so that your brain learns to trade trade this setup better the next time. And so archive, archive these setups, mark up the charts daily, and then finally gather the stats each month. You can see very clearly if you, if you made a dozen of these trades during the month, what percentage of the trades worked? Was there anything a little bit different that's, that, that some of the setups offered a better risk reward than some of the other ones? Um, and then as you gather those statistics, that'll allow you to even scale bigger into the ones that are showing the, the best risk reward and the most favorable, most favorable outcomes. So I hope you learned something here. This is something that you can apply right away. It flows very well from the pre-market pre um, stock selection and game planning, um, and you can build off of that into these second day plays. Thanks. All right. So I hope you guys found that very useful. Thank you, Mike and Steve. I'm still going to share that bonus that I promised you at the start of the webinar for those of you who stick around, which is the setup that turned one of our firm's traders into a seven-figure trader, and you're going to love that. But before that, I want to talk to you about how you can get trained by us professionally right from your own home, and also how you can have the potential opportunity of trading firm capital wherever you may live. Now, it's clear to us that if you've stuck around this far into the webinar and you're still paying attention, you are very serious about trading. All right, You're not just some hobbyist looking to have fun you want to become a consistently profitable trader and you want to make real money in trading and you may even want to do it full-time for a living and if that's the case 
What you've learned here today will certainly put you ahead of most independent traders and go a long ways into helping you do that. But when we hire a new trader, we don't just teach them a couple strategies and setups and then expect them to become consistently profitable. All right. Instead, we take them through a very structured and rigorous training program that teaches them everything they need to know to gain a lasting edge in the markets. Okay, we not only teach them a full range of strategies and setups, each with its own special place in their repertoire depending on market conditions, but we also give them all the accompanying skills and coaching and support that they need to succeed. Now, the great thing for you is that this training program is not locked behind the doors of our secretive proprietary trading world like it is in all other Wall Street firms. We've actually made it available online so it can be taken remotely by anyone in the world from their own home. So having said that, let us walk through it right now. And again, I'm making the qualifying statement that this is not for everyone. If you are someone who's not willing to work hard and not willing to dedicate yourself to learn these highly profitable proprietary strategies, do not sign up for this training. Okay. So if that's you, Thank you for your interest up to this point, but I advise you to exit the webinar now. As you'll see, our traders and also our co-founders are personally involved in providing coaching and support to anyone who enrolls in this program. And it's just not worth it to us to work with anyone who's not willing to put in some real time and effort to train properly. We are literally giving away proprietary trading secrets here. And they've taken us decades to develop, and we only want people who truly value it to be with us. So now having made that clear, let me show you what the training program is all about. 